Today we're going to start our landscape artwork. You're going to need a couple of things. First, you're going to want some scratch paper because we're going to do some practice drawing. You're also going to want the two handouts. The water handout that has two different kinds of landscapes, one with water and then this side has a water and boat. And then the other one that has two different kinds of landscapes that both have land without water. Um, these are nice and handy to look at while you're working. Another thing we're going to need today is our packet that we got yesterday. And we've started filling this out already. Today we're going to go on to the second page and we're going to start filling in these boxes. The first thing I'd like you to do is get some drawing paper. We are going to um, practice making a few basic things like trees and clouds and then we're going to put it all together in a practice um, landscape. So I'm going to do this on a whiteboard because it's a little bit easier um, for me to erase and for you to see. So on one side of your paper we're going to practice a tree. When we do a tree, we're going to start with the trunk and we're going to go up fairly straight but not straight like a ruler. I like to add in a little bit of grass down at the bottom and then we're going to start with a few large um, branches and you're not going to draw the whole branch, we're just going to draw part of it. Let's see, I really only have room for two, maybe I'll have one more that's coming out from behind. All right, after you get a couple of branches put on, the next thing is to put some smaller branches on. So I'm going to put um, a couple of branches coming out. Now this one's kind of coming out from the front. I'm going to kind of make it rounded, and then I can erase right there. have another one coming out from the back. You can draw right along with me. This one, let's see, I'll have another small one. I like to start sometimes with an oval and come out. And then I'd have to do some erase in here to show that it overlaps. Branches can kind of come out from behind the tree or from one side or another and do a lot of overlapping. Let's see, this one might go right there. After you get a few of the larger branches, then you can start breaking down into a couple smaller ones. If this is a large tree that is close up in your picture, you'll be able to see a lot of detail. After you get some branches done, the next part is to still to fill in the top. So I'm going to go around and start filling in my top. Well, this tree is so large that it's going to go off the top of the paper. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to do it real quick, make a little bit smaller um, so you can see the whole thing. So if this is my tree and these are my branches, pretend that I did these really, really nice. The top part of the tree we're going to have come around and we're not going to do this type of a thing. Okay, That's real cartoonish. Instead of doing it cartoony, okay, we're going to be a little bit more jagged. And rough. And then fill in a little bit here. And if you want, you can put a few little holes in the tree where you can see through it in between branches. All right, so that's the basics on how to draw a tree. Um, I want to talk real quick about clouds and mountains. When you draw clouds, a lot of people will put things like this in their sky. Very cartoony um, and a little bit, you know, elementary school. I'd like you to try a different way to draw clouds. One way to do it is to put kind of a straight bottom little sketchy but fairly straight on the bottom and then bring it around on top put a little puff on top but not quite so cartoonish you can even 
put a few of these together. Okay, so you have something a little more realistic. Uh, same thing with mountains. We don't want to do this type of a thing with our mountains. They look very elementary school. So instead of mountains that look like that, we can do things that look a little more realistic. Having one mountain overlap another mountain and not having them all the same height or the same shape. Maybe this one will come down in front of that one. Maybe we'd have something smaller kind of down here. Another thing that's important about mountains, when you do mountains, you need something at the bottom of them. So if we have um, these mountains here, we might need some trees or bushes. Since they're far away, we can't see a lot of detail, but you kind of need something at the base of the mountain to tell you that the mountains are over and there's stuff down here at the bottom. Um, when you set up your landscape, you need to have foreground, middle ground, and background. And we'll just do a quick practice one where we kind of put this stuff together. So let's start with a horizon line. We'll do a couple mountains. You can draw right along with me on your piece of sketch paper. You can kind of put your mountains in however you want, just as long as they're not the cartoony ones. Um, then we're gonna need a few layers of ground. Maybe I'll have a layer of ground that comes down, maybe some hills in front. I might want to put a tree in here. I'm going to draw this fairly quickly. Okay. Let's say my tree is going to go here. I can kind of fill in more detail later. I don't want to be afraid to make this large and to overlap. Maybe I have to erase part of this mountain. So I can do some more ground in here. Um, maybe I have some water that comes out. If I have some water. It comes out like this. Um, then I have to have something at the base of my mountains back here. Some boulders or trees, bushes, something to show that my mountains have ended and the ground has started again. Maybe have some more layers of ground down here. Um, if we want to put a little boat in the water, we can. Let's see, kind of a shape like this. This is a, just a real simple boat. A little water. My boat doesn't have anybody in it. Just an empty boat sailing along. Um, you are welcome to put some kind of a sun in. Try to get a nice round circle or moon. Please do not put suns up in the corner, especially with lines coming out. They look very elementary school. Maybe we put a few clouds in. Okay. When you practice, um, I want you to take a look at these handout sheets. Take a look at how the artists of these made their little boat, made their water. Um, what do their mountains look like? What do their trees look like? Um, there's a lot of really nice ideas. If you want to do a road, notice how the road gets wide in the front and then gradually gets more narrow in the back. You can see how lots of hills, rolling hills, look like when they are overlapping each other. If you do want to put a few little houses in, Look at these houses, how they look three-dimensional. Um, so take a peek at the handouts and have them kind of help you out. When you do your sketches, um, after you've got a few big ones, then I want you to come up with some different designs. You can have them go the tall way or the long way. It's up to you. Don't copy any of these exactly, but use some of the things that they use um, maybe in a different way. After you're done... Um, getting some drawing done. Um, we may have time to move on to the elements of design page. Um, that's possible. You're going to be filling this out and taking notes on this along with um, the PowerPoint.